We are now about two years out of the COVID-19 restrictions that were enacted across the continent. As economies try to rebuild and people embrace a different normal, the effects of the pandemic continue to linger and be felt. South Africa experienced some of the worst effects of COVID-19 and put in place severe restrictions, which included compulsory wearing of face masks, social distancing, lockdowns, and restriction of movement. The country also went through different waves of the outbreak, with the third COVID-19 wave being described as the one with the most devastating impact. As it became obvious that we would all have to learn to live with the virus, lockdowns and restrictions started easing. That also meant that South Africa, like many other countries, would have to contend with what life looked like after COVID. And life after the pandemic has seen several industries adjusting to what that means for them. In particular, South Africa's insurance industry has taken stock of the impact COVID-19 had on it. Insurance company Momentum has released its 2021 claims statistics, revealing a 66% increase in claims. The company paid out over 8.97 billion rand. Momentum went from paying 339 million rand and 1 billion rand in the first and second waves to paying 2.5 billion rand in COVID-19 related death claims in the third wave. In total, COVID-19 deaths accounted for 4 billion rand out of the 8.97 billion rand payouts of 2021. Today, we're talking about COVID-19 compensation in South Africa. This is Business Edge. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adileru Balogun. Joining me from Pretoria, South Africa, is Jenny Ingram. She's the head of product development at Momentum. Jenny, welcome to Business Edge. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's take a trip back to a bit of the time that the insurance industry enjoyed before the pandemic. Um, and South Africa really has the most robust insurance industry on the continent, but even the pandemic has sort of changed that in a way. But before that, how serious did South Africans take the issue of insurance, particularly health and life insurance? So I think we've got a proportion of the population who is, believes in insurance and access gets access to a financial advisor that helps him to make the choices to, to buy insurance. But unfortunately, I do think there's still a very large portion of the population who doesn't have access to good life insurance and financial advice. And that's obviously a big passion for, for us to, to make sure we actually do something about it. But uh, like you mentioned, the insurance industry in South Africa is very robust and it's got lots of experience over the years. And, and as, as such, I think we've got a big role to play and to share that knowledge widely and to see how we can make a difference on the continent. So you've described COVID-19 as a black swan moment. Really take us through that. What exactly for the layman is a black swan moment? What makes the pandemic such? So as, as insurance companies, we obviously need to make sure we hold enough capital to, to pay for events like this, which wasn't foreseen. And um, that's really where the, the term black swan comes in. It's, it's, it's a very um, severe and, and highly unlikely event that occurred that you didn't foresee and you didn't plan. And, and that was really what we experienced with COVID-19. It's just a severe impact that it had on claims for us in, the, in, a, in, a, in a part of the population, we, we, call, we refer to them as the insured population, where you would have thought that um, they would have access to quality healthcare, for example. But we definitely saw that during the third wave, for example, that the, it was um, ex extreme, uh, even worse than the general population, the impact that we saw on the insured population. But I think one would say that um, uh, uh, more than almost a doubling in claims in a particular year is, is quite a severe event. But luckily, the, the insurance industry is quite robust in South Africa, and we had enough capital to be able to withstand that. We've got good um, reinsurance partners um, that operate globally that also um, supported us during that time. And that obviously helped us to withstand all the, the impact that COVID-19 had. Let's talk about what things might have looked like if um, Momentum or even other insurance companies in the industry 
had not had the capital to sort of pay out all of these claims, what, what could have been the worst case scenario for you and others like you? I, I would say it would be unthinkable um, for insurance company to not be able to meet its, its um, obligations in a time when people especially needed it. And that's why I guess there's good, it's, it's good to have good regulation and um, good financial practices to make sure that you can actually withstand an event like this. Because I think um, the, it's so important that there's trust in the insurance system and in the insurance industry and that uh, the insurance companies will pay when, when it's needed. And, and that's really um, key for us to make sure that there's, there's this trust in the insurance system. And even though I think people might have thought that it's, it's a pandemic, they might, they might have wondered, will my insurance pay if mm -hmm. I die of, of something or complications of, of a pandemic? But the, the, that was what good insurance is all about. It's to, to protect you for those events that, that you didn't see coming. So you, of course, mentioned the waves in South Africa, probably more than any other country on the continent, went through uh, different waves of the pandemic. And the third wave was really the most deadly. But there was the first and there was the second. So as South Africans did see, unfortunately, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic continued to rise. Did you see an increase in people buying policies or was it more about people making claims on the policies that they had previously had? It was mostly claims on existing policies, but... We, we also saw a bit of an increase in the awareness for the need for life insurance. And I, I think that's where maybe a good claims track record uh, assures people that it's worthwhile to actually have life cover in place because it's crucial for, for families to be able to um, continue their, their lifestyle um, and the education of their kids, for example, after a breadwinner passes away. It's crucial for businesses, for example, to be able to continue to operate once a key person, for example, in the business is not there any, anymore, or the owner, especially if it's small businesses. So I think, um, yes, we saw, obviously, mostly it was the impact of existing uh, clients that we had already insured at that point. But there is definitely an increased interest in, in life insurance in general. Okay, so let's let's stick a bit on something you just talked about now in terms of sort of the benefits of having it, children being able to continue their education if the breadwinner passes, uh, businesses being able to continue forward. But beyond that, why should people actually consider life insurance? You're here on the continent. We know across the continent we hear a lot of religious talk of, you know, God is in control, you know, as God wishes. But in terms of even though South Africa has a robust insurance um, industry, there's still a need to continue to raise awareness. So what is the potential for life insurance to help a family, to help a business continue after somebody important to them dies? Yes, I, I, think, the, I think it can't be um, overstated, you know, the importance of almost, to a sense, you can, um, we, we all need to plan our finances and save for a rainy day when, when we for a rainy day or for when we need to stop working and retire. But life insurance really comes to its own if there's something that puts a stop to those plans and really sort of there's either a stop to your ability to earn an income or the breadwinner is away is, is passes on. So it's important for the next generation to be able to continue despite this, this uh, stop that was put to the plans. And I think if we can raise the awareness, even if it's just to go beyond just paying for a funeral, for example, is to really make sure that families can have access to funds, that they can continue schooling of their kids, that kids can go to varsity, and to make sure that their, their lifestyle is, is maintained and they can actually continue with with their life and that's not there's not this financial hardship on a family and businesses con after the event of of a, a breadwinner or anyone who actually interests or earns an income or has a significant impact on on a on a household passes on and so i think even in the south african industry funeral policies of for example very popular um but normal life insurance definitely has a great a benefit to make sure that there's actually wealth creation and continuation after 
um, a breadwinner passes away, breadwinner or even someone cont contributing to the family. Very true. All right, so there was an unfortunate phenomenon that was noticed with the COVID-19 pandemic and some of these life insurance policies, and that was where the policyholder and even the beneficiary also passed away uh, in the course of the pandemic. In a situation such as this, who would then be uh, the beneficiary if the main beneficiary listed in the policy also passed away because of COVID-19? How, how would the payout work? So, yeah, I think this was quite unprecedented times during the third wave, especially when we saw these, these um, sort of situations pan out. In an event where there's only one beneficiary nominated, obviously, if, if an insured life passes away, the proceeds is always paid to the beneficiary. If we have any troubles um, getting hold of a beneficiary or the beneficiary also passed away, normally that money will then go into the estate of the deceased and the, so the money is not lost it's just go it will go into the estate of the deceased and it might just take a little bit longer for all the finances to be uh, for this for everything to be handled and and um, taken care of but the money is still there it just takes longer and and it's it's often a pity if we do have problems with the beneficiary and paying out insurance because the aim is to do it quickly and the aim is to make sure that there's no delay in payments. That's why we also always encourage people to make sure their beneficiaries are updated and that they also have a good will in place to support um, what needs to happen with, with everything once, they are, uh, once they're not there anymore. All right, Jenny, hold on. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at issues surrounding the premiums as well as how insurance companies na um, navigated the intense demand that came almost all at one time, the surge. And also, you mentioned earlier what potential lessons there are uh, for the South African insurance industry and also the industry across the continent. We're looking at COVID-19 compensation in the wake of the pandemic. And of course, one of the main insurers in South Africa um, has paid out almost 9 billion rand. All low. Not all of it tied to the pandemic, but a large proportion of it tied uh, to the pandemic. We'll continue the conversation right after this. Still with me is Jenny Ingram. She's the head of product development at Momentum. As we take a look at COVID-19 compensation in South Africa. Now, many people who have insurance know that on a normal, regular basis, if nothing happens, they could be tied to their premium for a while. But if something does happen, the premium does tend to go up. So now I'll put the question to Jenny. In terms of the payouts that have been tied to the COVID-19 related deaths, has that affected the premiums going forward? Uh, for either policyholders or those who are incoming now trying to put uh, pick up policies for themselves and their families? So life insurance in general in South Africa, we issue a, a policy with a guaranteed term where the premiums are actually guaranteed the level of it. And it's unlike in, um, short term insurance where the, the premium is likely to go up after a claim. Mm. So life insurance policyholders actually have got a great length or a great extent of protection in that sense that the premiums is unlikely to go up as a result of COVID-19 specifically. It's more likely that new business, new clients might need to pay slightly more as insurance companies take into account the effect of, on, of COVID-19 on future mortality. The view at this point is that uh, we do think even though we've reached a high level of immunity in the population, is, there is likely to be a, a slightly higher mortality going forward, and that will be factored into the price of new business going forward. But clients who's already got cover, um, it's, and within the guaranteed term, they would, their prices would not be adjusted, and it will be according to what they was contractual, contractually agreed. So your answer makes me think of some of the consequences we've seen. And the world says that we should prepare for more people who have long COVID, who will have to live with the impact of the COVID-19 uh, um, virus and whatever on themselves and their bodies. And that is going to affect a lot of people going forward. So we've talked about life insurance, but in terms of health insurance, for people who did have COVID and survived or people who may now be battling long COVID, what is that looking like? So we have definitely seen one or two claims where there's uh, someone had permanent 
uh, damage to their lungs, for example, as a result of COVID-19. And if they had, for example, an occupational disability benefit and they're unable to perform their occupation as a result that they would get a payout to compensate for that, whatever or what their cover level was. We also paid a lot of claims for on income protection where someone was booked off as a result of paying of, of testing positive for COVID-19. In the beginning of the pandemic, uh, they were booked off for, for two weeks at least. Um, and for your self-employed individuals, if they don't work, they don't get paid. Um, so you can actually take in income protection cover for that. We also paid a, quite a number of critical illness payouts where someone had, for example, fibrosis of the lungs or they were hospitalized for an extended period of time and they had critical illness cover in place. And we do think that long COVID is, is something that will, will um, play a role going forward. We also hopeful, though, that there, as we actually get more information on how to deal with long COVID, there's, that there's actually quite a lot that one can do to treat it on a holistic basis. And that we'll continue to make sure that we educate people around what can be done to mitigate those effects of long COVID. So aside from COVID, we've heard from scientists and climate change activists that the world needs to prepare for more outbreaks such as COVID-19, that because of the warmer weather, because of our activities in cutting down the rainforest, the likelihood of more outbreaks such as this are increasing. So how is the insurance industry preparing for such projections? Because it's going to be possibly a reoccurring theme of having these intense moments of policies uh, being, um, the claims being put forth for the policies almost regularly now going forward in the next three, four, five, ten years. Yes, definitely. I think COVID-19 has opened our eyes to the fact that it's very likely that the recurrence of a pandemic of this nature and magnitude is very possible, um, at least let's say every 25 years. And now insurance companies needs to make sure that they actually plan for this and that they can actually handle those events when it, when it happens. And it's important to, to not only focus on pandemics, but also the possibility of other events that could happen and could have an impact on, on life insurance. I think we had the unfortunate situation in KwaZulu-Natal earlier in this year in South Africa with severe flooding, for example. And it's so, so it's important that we continue the good work, I think, of obviously ensuring that we can withstand those events, that we um, have the financial robustness to be able to handle it, but that we also try and make a difference by educating everyone and to do our part to try and mitigate those events as far as, as, as we can. Momentum, for example, is quite an advocate for living a healthy lifestyle where it, it can actually, we can educate people about what can they do to make a difference. But it's important for insurance companies to show that they are, they support, they are with their clients and their clients are covered during those crises. So in the report that your company released for the 2021 claims, of course, we saw how much COVID-19 uh, affected the bottom line. But it's not just about the bottom line, as you said, about maintaining a healthy uh, lifestyle. But there's also something else that um, Momentum has noticed, and I'm very sure many other uh, insurance companies have noticed that. And that's the rising case of cancer claims um, that are also coming in as well. But it's not the only thing. What other claims are you seeing that are on the rise in terms of um, lifestyle and possibly medical issues as they may be and how is the insurance industry working to address that? So the types of claims that we are keeping a close eye on are things like um, cancer, like you mentioned, especially um, since people during lockdowns didn't get the treatment that they might have or, or the, even the diagnosis and screening um, to, to go to the, you know, to get treatment for these for these different conditions as cancer. There's obviously cardiovascular disease like heart attacks. That's it's quite prevalent in our market as well. So I think we are trying to advocate that clients need to always try their best to go for their screening. We even try and facilitate certain screening events so that clients can get um, check out their, for example, their blood pressure and their cholesterol so that they can see these early warning signs and act before it they can actually while they can still do something. Um, we obviously keeping a close eye also on suicides. We know in the insurance industry, for example, that often uh, with economic trouble and economic downturn, that there could be an impact on suicides. 
we've been very fortunate so far that we haven't seen a massive increase in our in our suicides in our insured population yet but we do try and and um, keep an eye on this and do also like we said we advocate a healthy lifestyle which actually also entails being able to switch off a little bit and and you do what you need to do and having good financial planning in place to try and avoid as much of, of, of the financial turmoil that we are seeing around uh, in many families at, at the moment. So, yeah, I think prevention is better than cure. And we definitely try and advocate that a lot uh, th through our different communications and reward programs for our clients. All right. So finally, Jenny, before I let you go, in general terms, South Africa's insurance industry accounts for more than 70 percent of the entire African insurance markets and life insurance takes up about 80% of premiums uh, for your market. In terms of countries like Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, um, and all others who can sort of learn from the robust nature of the industry in South Africa, what is there for us to learn? Look, I think um, we are very fortunate in South Africa to have a diverse population. And I, I think we, 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 we've sort of designed solutions that can suit everyone and i think we, we we can actually make a difference by reaching out to different countries and helping them with the design and pricing of their products but it's important i think to always take into consideration each country and their own circumstances their own population and the characteristics and the, the, the nature of the health for example healthcare system and what support people get from the government and but i think from the insurance uh, sector in south africa um, we, it's good that we, we've got a lot of pricing capabilities. Uh, we've learned how to underwrite risks and the, how to, to also assess claims and because claims assessment can also be quite a, diff, a complex product, a sort of a, a aspect, especially in benefits like disability and health insurance. Um, so I think there's lots to learn for, um, from the South African market, and we are actually we'd be very keen to engage and, and to share that knowledge. All right, Jenny Ingram, thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. And South Africa, unfortunately, took a lot of the brunt of the numbers when it, come, when it came to the COVID-19 cases and deaths here on the continent, but it seems that the insurance industry was able to step up and play out the games, of course, pay out the claims that people put uh, forth. There's a lot to be said about insurance, and over the times, we'll continue to have conversations on why and how we all should get insured. You're watching Business Edge. When we come back, it's NC4 to watch. And now to a few stories we're keeping our eyes on. The RAND was flat in early trade on Friday as the dollar struggled towards a steady week ahead of the U.S. jobs data release later today. And that data could give clues on the Federal Reserve's move to raise interest rates. Namibia's governor of the Bank of Namibia says the prospects for a stronger recovery in growth are being dampened by rising food and energy prices, likely being made worse due to unemployment, poverty and inequality in the country. A consortium of Abu Dhabi's Masdar and Egypt's Infinity Energy is set to buy a majority state, stake, I beg your pardon, in Lakela Power from private equity house Actis. And this is coming from sources directly linked to the sale. And the deal could be worth close to $1 billion. And finally, crude oil prices rose somewhat on Friday as markets dismissed OPEC Plus's intention to raise output, questioning if the additional output would compensate for lost Russian supply and fulfill China's surging demand in the face of loosening COVID restrictions. That's our show. Don't forget, follow us on social media. Find our websites and, of course, download our mobile app as well. And I'll see you on Monday, 11 a.m. West African time as we put African business, the economy, and finance front and center. You have a good weekend.